Today we're going to be talking about complex numbers and roots. And this goes back to what we were talking about a few lessons ago. And so if we have the equation f of x equals x squared plus 1, you guys know from your transformations that that vertex is up one unit. So when you're looking at the graph of that, you're not going to have any x-intercepts. And remember, x-intercepts were solutions to our equation. So you can find the solutions by doing imaginary numbers. So an imaginary number or an imaginary unit i is defined as the square root of negative 1. So keep that in mind. And we use this to write the square root of any negative number. So simplifying each one of these. So break down what's underneath your radical into a perfect square and times by negative 1 since there's a negative underneath there. So we have negative 1 times 1, 21. Well, because of our properties of square roots, we can simplify each one of those. So I have 5 times by i times by 11. So I can multiply the 5 and the 11 together to get 55i. Right, our next example, we have a negative times by underneath our radical. Break down that negative 96 into negative 1 times by 16 times by 6 because 16 is the largest perfect square that goes into 96. So we can break this down into negative square root of negative 1 times by the square root of 16 times by the square root of 6. Now that's going to change to negative. The square root of 16 is 4i times by the square root of 6. Okay, our next example where we're solving this equation. Remember to solve a, an equation involving a squared, we square root both sides. So that's going to leave us into x equals, when you square root, don't forget your plus and minus. Negative 144 can be split up into negative 1 times 144. Now I square root each one of those to get 12i. Now our next example, you need to isolate this x squared term. So I subtract 90 from both sides. And then I divide by 5. Now I subtracted the 90 over, so the 90 should be negative. I divide by 5, so we get negative 18. Then we square root both sides. So we get x squared equals plus or minus negative 18. Now break down 18 into a perfect square. 18 breaks down into negative 1 times 9 times 2. 9 is our perfect square. And it's actually x equals, because we've already taken care of that square root, so now what we do is we make that x equals plus or minus 3i times root 2. Okay, complex numbers can be written in the form a plus bi where a and b are real numbers and i is our imaginary unit. Okay, so now we have the set of real numbers and we have our set of imaginary numbers. So remember at the beginning of the year we talked about real numbers. Today's the magical day where we get to talk about imaginary numbers and then complex numbers that have a real part which is the a part and the imaginary part, the term that has the plus bi, the i which is our imaginary unit. And we're going to be doing a lot of operations with these 
imaginary units. Our next example is we're going to find the values of x and y that make that equation true. So what you need to keep in mind is you need to keep in mind that the real parts 4x has to equal 2. So 4x has to equal 2, so x is going to be equal to 1 half. And then our imaginary parts, the 10i has to equal negative 4y. So the 10 coefficient has to equal our negative 4y coefficient. When solving for y, we get negative 10 over 4. I reduce that. I'm going to reduce each by 2 to get negative 5 halves 4y. Complex conjugates. Now I want to make sure you guys know this. So please make sure it's written in your notes. Our book doesn't cover this, but I want to make sure it's super important for something that we do that our book actually does cover. So the complex conjugate. Notice that A and B stay the same. A and B stay the same. The only thing that changes is for your complex conjugate. One side is minus. One side is plus. Okay, so finding each complex conjugate. 8 plus 5i, well that's going to change to 8 minus 5i. Notice how the two coefficients for our, our real part and our imaginary part stay the same. The plus just changes to a minus. Now for b, the sign in front of the 6i changes. And that's going to be super important to us later on in the lesson. Okay, adding or subtracting. Honestly, adding or subtracting is just like combining like terms. You combine the real parts. So when I'm adding, I'm going to combine the 4 and the negative 6 to get a negative 2. The com then you combine the imaginary parts. You have a 2i minus 7i. That's going to change to a minus 5i. And that's an a plus bi form. Now for the next one. You might want to distribute that negative. So leave the first one alone. Distribute the negative. so that you don't make a mistake. It's okay to show too much work because it's showing me what your thought process is. So 5 and 2 can combine to be a 7. 2i plus 3i, that's going to be a plus i. And there's our answer there. Our next example. Now, I is super interesting, and first I want you to pay attention to this table over here. We know I is the square root of negative 1, but we're always going to be writing that as I. I squared. Well, when I square both sides of that equation, we're going to get negative 1. Now, i to the third is like i squared times by i. Well, that simplifies to negative i. i to the fourth. Well, that's i squared times by i squared. Negative 1 times negative 1. That's a positive 1. i to the fifth is like i to the fourth times by i to the first, because i to the fourth is 1. So that goes to 1. So therefore, i to the fifth is the same thing as i. i to the sixth, we write it as i to the fourth, since i to the fourth is 1, times by i squared. Well, that's the same thing as negative 1. So notice how after you get to 4, they repeat. 
So your trick is, when we're looking for i to the seventh, take 7 and divide it by 4, since they repeat every 4 units. Well, that is 1 with a remainder of 3. Look at what your remainder is. If you go to what your remainder is, you go to the i to the third, since that's what your remainder is. And that's going to be equal to negative i. i to the 38th now. Take your 38, divide by 4. That's going to be 9 with a remainder of 2. So you got i to the 2nd. Since you go to whichever one of these four, i squared is equal to negative 1. If you have no remainder, you go to i to the fourth. So keep that in mind also. And you might want to make yourself a little note on that. Okay, multiplying out. Now multiplying out, you're going to need those tricks that we just talked about. Where remember, i is the square root of negative 1, where we just leave that as i. But then i squared, we square both sides of this equation to get us negative 1. Okay, now multiplying. It's just like distributing. Distribute the 2i in, the negative 2i in. You get negative 4i. Distributing the negative 2i to the negative 4i, we get a plus 8i squared. Now, i squared, we change that to a negative 1. So that's going to be negative 4i plus 8 times by a negative 1. Writing in a plus bi form, the negative 8 comes first, because that's our real portion, minus 4i. Next example. This is just FOIL. So first terms together. 12. Outer terms. Inner terms. And our last terms. Now remember, when you're multiplying i times i, you get i squared. Now combine your like terms. And change that 6, change that, change this i squared to being a negative 1. Now simplify. This is the same thing as 12 plus 19i plus 6. Combine the 12 and the 6 to get us 18 plus 19i. And that is an A plus B I form, because remember, your real part comes first. Now notice, I'm multiplying two conjugates together here. Notice what's going to happen. That makes our life super easy. First terms together. Outer terms together. Inner terms together. And last terms together. Notice how the middle terms go away since they're opposite signs. So really what I have here is I have 4 minus 81 times i squared, which is negative 1. So I have 4 plus 81, which is going to be equal to 85. Now keep in mind, when I multiply by my complex conjugates, my answer ended up being just a real number. There was no imaginary pieces to it. So that's important for us. Okay, divide. This i and that i in our denominators are like having square roots in the denominator. So we need to get rid of that square root. The best way is to take and multiply by i over i for the first one. Because... On the top, we're going to get 3i plus 10i squared. On the bottom, we're going to have 5i squared 
Remember, I squared is like saying negative 1. So on the bottom, I'm going to have 5 times by a negative 1. On the top, we're going to have 3i plus 10 times by a negative 1. So really, what we have there is we have negative 10 plus 3i over a negative 5. And I can separate that out. 10, negative 10 over negative 5 plus a 3 over a negative 5i. And that's going to simplify to 2 minus 3 fifths i. Okay, our next example. Multiply by the complex conjugate of the bottom. This is why we this is why I teach you guys that complex conjugate. So if I multiply by the complex conjugate of the bottom, not the top, the bottom, because when I multiply by that, I'm going to get a real number out. That's why I do that last example on example 7. So I multiply. All right, going through our multiplication. First, on the top, first outer, inner, last, don't forget the i squared, on the bottom, remember those middle terms go away on the bottom, so now go through and simplify. On the top, I'm going to have 8 plus 36i. The i squared changes to a negative, so that becomes a negative 16. On the bottom, we have 16. The i squared becomes negative, so that changes to a plus 4. 18 minus 16. Well, that's going to be a negative 8 plus 36i over 20. Now I can separate that numerator. Simplify 8 over 20, each by 4 to get negative 2 fifths. Simplify, again, each one of those by 4 to get a 9 fifths, and we're done. So remember, if you have an a plus bi in the denominator, you have to multiply by that complex conjugate. This top one, I didn't have to multiply by the complex conjugate. It was just enough to multiply by i, because the i then became squared, and I had um, less simplifying to do. Okay. There are your lesson questions for the day, and please make sure those are submitted on time for me.